So hi, Tyler. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you, Dr. Tim? Very well. In Memorial Hermann Hospital at the University of Texas Medical Center in Houston, neurosurgeon Nitin Tandon visits 26-year-old epilepsy patient Tyler. Dr. Tandon has placed platinum electrodes on the surface of Tyler's brain so that he can monitor electrical signals when Tyler is having a seizure. Before we can even understand how we would come up with prosthetic devices, for example, that may be of use, that we may be able to use to supplant certain brain functions that have been lost, we have to model those and understand those at a computational level. Since such studies contribute to the understanding of epilepsy, Tyler is a willing participant. I think the more education there is about it, the better off the rest of the people will be. Patients like Tyler have also contributed to a study of how the brain forms memories of events in terms of time and space. So it's been a puzzle of how the brain communicates both with the where and the when areas. Dr. Tandon had patients with implanted electrodes carry out learning tasks that involved both space and time to see how the brain handled the information. The way the brain does this, that it accomplishes a communication with these two different areas at the same time, is by using two different frequencies coming from the same uh, part of the brain, the hippocampus. The hippocampus is a structure on the lower side of the brain that regulates the formation of memories that are then stored in separate areas of the brain. It's very much like saying that you have a, a radio station that is sending out signals to two different groups of listeners at the same time and does that by using different frequencies. At the University of California, Davis, neuroscientist Arnie Ekstrom analyzed data from the brain scans applying graph theory techniques used to study information flow. He, Tandon, and their colleagues hope to pursue this investigation in future studies. Since memory loss is one of the problems associated with epilepsy, Dr. Tandon says this research holds promise for epileptics as well. We're setting ourselves up for um, being able to study memory dysfunction much better than we have with these electrodes in patients with epilepsy and also potentially at some point being able to restore normal network dynamics. Dr. Tandon hopes that one day such advances could help epileptic patients like Tyler lead more normal lives. Greg Flakus, VOA News, Houston. So, uh...